The parable of the prodigal son is a beautiful story that we know, that we heard many times, but it's always impressive to listen to. It's a kind of freshness also that we can find in this uh, reading. The younger son is amazing. He's a, he has a, a very nice situation. He lives with uh, his father. He has a family. He has a, um, his house. To, he has his fed also, and he works. But he has a great desire for independence. He wants the goods, but without any link with his father. Like young people, teenagers sometimes, who want their parents' cottage, but without the parents. So, Give me your cottage, I will enjoy the cottage, but don't come this weekend. I will be there. I want the cottage, but I don't want you. Sometimes we, we hear that. And he goes away, he leaves his family, and he, at the beginning he has a very uh, joyful life. He has a lot of money in his pocket, and when you are rich and young, and you can make friends more easily, and so he has a lot of friends. And he thinks that he will have this money, it's in uh, always. But sadly, if he doesn't work, he will not have this money anymore. And so when he has no money, his so-called friends forget him. You are not interesting anymore, and so they leave him alone, and he has to find a, a position because he wants to, 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 to eat, and uh, he, he works in a very uh, sad situation for him, and, and he is alone. And then he came to himself, like said Jesus in this parable, and he comes aware of his situation, and he tries, and he remembers what was happening with, to him while he was with his father and his family. And he's, he goes back to his, and his father, his father welcomes him, giving robe, uh, ring, and sandals. And we can, it's always uh, uh, symbolic, but I don't want to focus on, that, on these details tonight. And the father said, we have to celebrate and rejoice. This son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and he is found. And I think we can find in this uh, younger son uh, a realistic portrait of our uh, society, modern society. We know that, for example, we know people who, who win at the lottery. It's a good thing they, 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 they become millionaires. We, who would say, why not to be a millionaire, don't have to work? And so they enjoy life and they have a lot of friends at the beginning. But sometimes it's not so funny to be a millionaire uh, when you are not used to do so. And shortly after, there, is a, there are battles among the family. The, they divide themselves. And sometimes also, the, there's a divorce between, among the, the couple who receive this money. It's not always easy to deal with this such an amount of money. And this is an image of our society. We have a, a very... Uh, abundant uh, material so society. We, we have a lot of things. We uh, have nice uh, residence. We have cars. We have food. We have a lot of things. It's becoming sometimes difficult with the pandemic, but at least we have, we enjoy life uh, many mainly. And many people also are paying attention to the body care. I know that there are people. I don't know if there is in in the parishes and. I knew somewhere that there were people looking for Botox to, be, to look younger, and they, they pay a lot of money for that. We have a lot of money to spend for, uh, on, on a useless thing. But for many people, God is absent of their lives. There is no relation with God, like the younger son of the, the, the parable. There is no relation uh, with God. God is absent in the lives of many people. And when God is absent, we know that Selfishness grows, violence also, and respect for human life. Uh, we don't pay respect to, the li to life when we are not related to God. Some people say that the religion is a source of, of violence. I read that somewhere. But when we look at the, the last century, there were two world wars uh, in 1944 and 1939. And these wars uh, killed a lot of people, and they are not related to religion. There's nothing religious in, that, in these wars. And, and Stalin and, and Hitler and, and Pol Pot and Mao Tse Tung were not so religious people. They thought they were God, and they killed 
and, and they want to have a power uh, over all the others. But when we are related to God, it's impossible uh, to kill. And we have to be challenged by the, the parable tonight. Like the younger son, you ne we need to stop and to think, and what are we doing with our lives? Sometimes we, we live uh, at a superficial uh, level. Uh, we are called to make room for the essential in our lives. Does God exist? Is there any, uh, is there an afterlife when we die? And so, so many people now, when they die, they don't pay attention of eternal life. We are celebrating the life, but we don't pay attention to eternal life. Uh, the best way for that is, is to offer the celebration of mass for the, our dead people, because we know that they don't disappear when they die. They are still alive. They are united to God. God is at the origin of the universe and is the one he wants to be, to be related to us. He said today in the gospel, all that is mine is yours. God wants to share everything with us and also eternal life and eternal love that he is himself. And so I think it's very important for us to remind of these things. Uh, this is why we wear the, 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 the rose vestment today because it's the joy of the gospel that God brings light in, into our world. And sometimes many people think of God only when something negative happens in their lives. I, I don't know if you remember, but perhaps it not happened here in, in Timmins, but in uh, 1988 in Shikutimi, when I grew up, there was an, an earthquake. And I remember it was at Friday evening, it was frightening because the, the earthquake... Uh, and the next Sunday, the church was full of people. I don't know what happened, they think perhaps I, have, perhaps I could have died in this occasion, but the next Sunday, the, the church was full. So when something negative happens in their lives, they think of, to God. And uh, sometimes also, they, they, they think of, uh, to God at the last moment of their lives. There's a proverb in Italian, when the world no longer wants me, I turn to you, O oh good Jesus. When I'm not interesting anymore, I think of you, Jesus. And we see that also in, in the, the, the gospel when the, the, the thief dies with Jesus. He thinks to Jesus at the last moment of his life, but at least he, he turns and says, remember me in your kingdom. But at least when, we have to, when somebody is about to die, we, we have to remind that them that eternal life exists and God waits for them. And so the, the, the presence of God is very uh, important in our lives. And we can look also at the, the elder son in the family that the Jesus spoke about today. He, he works without joy. He's there doing his job. He's not interested and is not related to his father or neither is his brother. And he said, this son of yours, no, the, the father said, this brother of yours, is, you, are, you are related to him. And, and so we, we have also to discover that being related to God is the source of being, being related to the others. And we need that in this very sad situation of Ukraine and Russia and all the wars, the wars that, going, that are still going on in, on the earth. We are not related to God and we want to kill the others. And so to, to, we have to enter into the attitude of, the, of God the Father and to be like him. And the, the best way for that, of course, is prayer. Prayer is the only way to become like God. I don't know how long you pray every day. It would be nice to have a survey. Those who pray five hours, please uh, raise your hand. Father John? No? 15 minutes, perhaps, okay, at least. And so, but it's good to find minutes for God every day, beginning your day in the presence of God, asking God to be like him uh, in this day, and you will be more happy and you will spread the God of life, uh, the, God, uh, the, the love of God in, in your daily life. And uh, this is why I, uh, I wrote this uh, letter, pastoral letter of Lent. I, don't, I know that uh, a few of them are already reading that. You can read the, the pastoral letter. It's a meditation on, uh, the, on the Eucharistic prayer number four. 
you know that I was uh, working on that in French because I am a member of the International Commission of Translation of Latin from Latin into French. And so since I was working on the prayers, I, I have to be more aware of the meaning of the words. And since I was working on that, I discovered more deeply that the prayers of the church are rooted in the word of God. And so when I, I wrote this letter, it's to help the people to discover how deep are the prayers of the church and how they, they, they present the, the mystery of love uh, of God. And so I invite you to read that. If you are not able to read, you can watch that on, on YouTube. And there's a, also a gift there because when you are tired of listening to the bishop, you can stop. You cannot stop tonight. But there you can stop. And But the, the prayer is uh, for 15 days. It's not so long. You take uh, a piece every day, like w when you eat uh, a pizza, you don't eat the pizza in, in only in one bite. You have to cut the pizza in many piece, pieces, and you do so also for the prayers. You you, you uh, eat slowly, and when you repeat the prayers in your mind, in your spirit, it, it, it comes down also in your heart. It's the best way. When we eat the food, it's in our mouth and going into the stomach, but when we repeat the word of God in our head, it comes also in our heart and we become more aware of the, the mystery of God. So I invite you to, to, to use this letter or other, another way to pray. The best prayer, of course, is you, the Eucharist because we receive the word of God, we receive the, the communion and we are gathered also with our brothers and sisters. But when we are alone, we can pray and I invite you. Uh, by meditating this this letter and uh, the prayer of the church to discover more deeply the mystery of God's love. Amen. <laughs>